Hello everyone, it's Dr. Beth Secord, and today we're going to talk about the challenge of causal loops for time travel. Um, last lecture we talked about whether or not time travel included any logical inconsistencies or um, logical impossibilities. Causal loops are a candidate for a lot for something that makes time travel the concept of time travel incoherent. Okay, so um, this is a lecture that I gave at last year's Star Trek convention about time travel in Star Trek. I presented one model of time travel in Trek and looked at whether or not that was logically possible. So this is um, David Lewis's model. It's the Ludovician model of time travel, where time travel is done in this four-dimensional space-time block, the static block. And the time traveler just moves along the time dimension in a, in a way that's analogous to us um, driving in a car. So we can move through space. The time traveler has figured out a way to move through time. So the time traveler just moves to a different location in the space-time block, in a different location, different temporal location in the space-time block. All right. So these time travelers move within a stat within a four-dimensional static or B theory universe. Um, in this universe, time does not move. It just seems like it moves to us. So um, the feeling that time is moving forward is just subjective. And um, in this model, time travelers do not leave this our universe, our four-dimensional space-time block. So there are other models of time travel where um, a time traveler would skip to another, um, another universe or to enter a hypertime. This model of time travel introduces a, um, a certain paradox or something that's troubling, troubling for the logical consistency of time travel, is this idea of causal loops or gin. So a causal loop is this, A causes B, B causes C, and then C causes A again. What's the problem here? Well, there's no explanation for what caused A in the first place, right? It just is this loop with no beginning, no end, and no explanation for why this happened at all. Jin are just kind of like a type of causal loop, but it's an object, person, or piece of information that has no origin. So causal, you could say that every causal loop is a gin in some, in some sense, but an object, person, or piece of information that just exists, and you say, where did it come from? And the explanation you give is circular. So here's an explanation, I like this one about Van Gogh, um, of a gin. So Van Gogh, um, young Van Gogh enters a time machine, travels to the future, goes to a museum, and finds all this work, artwork attributed to him. He even is surprised to see that the paintings, the self-portrait depicts him. He said, oh my gosh, I've become a famous painter in the future. He goes to the museum gift shop and buys the complete works of Vincent Van Gogh. He then takes the book back in the time machine where he replicates all the art from beginning to end of his career, even the beginning of the book, and he works through the whole book and destroys the book, let's say. The question is, where did these paintings come from to begin with, or where did the idea for these paintings come from if Van Gogh was just copying? But Van Gogh didn't start those paintings, he got it from the museum book, so it goes around and around. So that the paintings are, or the idea for the paintings is a gin in that story. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. We were cruising along at warp seven, then we pick up a distress call and moved in to investigate. But now, you're saying that the other ship is actually just a reflection of us, and that the distress call is actually just the captain's opening hail. But we picked up the distress call before she sent the hail. How could we have been seeing a reflection of something we hadn't even done yet? Am I making any sense here? Okay, so um, here's the causal loop in Voyager from Tom... Uh, Paris's perspective, Voyager gets a hail at time one, a distress call. 
Voyager follows that distress call at time two. Voyager gets stuck in some space anomaly at time three and then says, oh, we should issue a distress call. They issue this distress call. And then they find out that, that, that their distress call is what they heard to begin with and what caused them to get stuck in the first place. So all of this just goes around and around and there's really no explanation for them getting stuck or for the distress call at all. And that's troubling from a, if you're trying to say that something is logically consistent. It does not seem to be logically consistent. Okay, here's an, another example of a causal loop in Star Trek IV. Oh, and then I need to turn off the audio again. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. What exactly did you have in mind? Well, a moment alone, please. You uh, realize, of course, if we give him the formula, we're altering the future. Why? How do we know he didn't invent the thing? Okay, so in this, uh, this uh, Star Trek movie, um, and you can start anywhere in the circle. It's arbitrary, really. Um, but that transplant, uh, transparent aluminum is invented in 1986, and I just stipulated 1986 because that's when this movie was released. Or at least this is a possibility that Scotty considers. It's invented in 1986. Scotty learned about transparent aluminum in Star Trek school from textbooks. Then Scotty travels back in a time machine to 1986. He finds himself in need of transparent aluminum. And then Scotty goes into this lab and shares the secret of transparent aluminum with um, the inventor of transparent aluminum. And this character says, you're gonna change the future. And Scotty says, oh, but um, how do you know that this guy isn't actually the inventor? Okay, so it's a problem. All right, so why exactly is this a problem? I mean, I've showed you that it's kind of weird and there's no explanation and um, things go round and round and it seems kind of arbitrary. But um, just to kind of put your finger on why it's a problem, um, it violates something called the principle of sufficient reason, reason um, which was something that Leibniz articulated. And it says that there must be a cause or explanation for the existence of any being, any fact, or any event. So, and another way to say this in layman's terms is things just don't pop into existence out of nowhere. So um, there are questions about whether or not we should accept the principle of, principle of sufficient reason. It seems co like common sense. Um, doesn't it seem like there should be an explanation for any being that exists, any fact or any event in our experience, um, there are explanations. Science is based on um, finding explanations for these things. Um, a scientific explanation that just said, oh, uh, there's no explanation, it just came into existence out of nowhere, would not be considered a viable explanation. Yeah, so this is a problem for gin and causal loops. But David Lewis says that no, he does not think that causal loops and jinn make time travel incoherent or logically impossible. Um, these causal loops are weird and strange and anomalous, but it doesn't involve, um, it doesn't create a contradiction or make time travel, the concept of time travel incoherent. So these concepts themselves are strange, but they're not logically impossible or self-contradictory. Okay, this is a quote from the article. Almost everyone agrees that God or the Big Bang or the entire infinite past of the universe or the decay of the tritium atom is uncaused and inexplicable. Then if these are possible, why not also the inexplicable causal loops that arise in time travel? If God can exist with no cause, if the universe can just exist, you say, why does the universe exist or how did it come into being? It just does. The Big Bang just happened. God just exists. If you can do that for those things, and those things aren't logically impossible, he says we certainly can do that for smaller things like 
Van Gogh's paintings or for Voyager's hail or for um, transparent aluminum. Okay, so you're supposed to read the story All You Zombies by Robert Heinlein. It's a famous short story. And the main character, um, I'll just give you a hint, the main character, the bartender that you start out with in the story is a djinn. The main, and All You Zombies is full of all these crazy causal loops. It's a pretty cool story. Yeah, and David Lewis actually cites this story as one that is logically coherent. Strange, very strange, but logically coherent. Okay, um, for your discussion post, I would like you to um, watch this episode um, of Doctor Who. It involves an episode of Ludovician time travel or Lewis's type of time, time travel in a four dimensional universe. And just to give you a hint, Jin in this episode is this television script or the content of the message that the doctor is giving on the television. And I would like you to draw a map of, a space-time map, actually just focus on time, don't worry about space, um, draw a temporal map of the causal loops involved in this story. I have provided you with a, a sample map for all you zombies time travel diagram. Okay, here you go. Okay, so this is obviously not a, this is just temporal. So this, um, yeah, and this is where the story begins, where the bartender starts reflecting on his life. And then um, he goes in the back room and gets in a time machine. And then there's all these crazy loops in the story. So I won't give it away, but um, there's a time travel diagram for all you zombies.